How to deal with a bad property management company. You want to know how you deal with a bad property management company? Put them to sleep. Fire them. This video's over. Okay, all seriousness, you do need to fire them, but that's, that's just one thing. You need to be able to find a good property management company. So let's talk about what are the qualities of a good property and bad property management company. I'm going to share with you a story. Maybe you've heard it before, maybe not, but how I determine if they're a bad property management company. And by the end of this, I'm going to share with you a foolproof way that you're never taken advantage of again by a property management company. I'm going to share with that secret with you here at the end. I'm going to share with you a way that I determine like real quickly if they're good or bad. All right. So first off, do they pick up the phone and are they responsive? That means via text, if they have a phone number uh, that I could text to, or do they respond if I leave a voicemail? So I, I've had friends go, I'm not sure about my property management company. Do you mind helping me vet them? No, not at all. You know, how often do they come and maintain the property? How, more importantly, how often are you charged for them to come and do maintenance at the property? If you're charged on a weekly basis, what I like to do is I like to take and put things strategically around the property. Because, hey, if I put one thing out there, maybe they miss it one week. But if I put multiple things out and they're missed week after week after week after week, and no one's ever seen these people come and weeds are growing and so on and so on, you're probably being taken advantage of, right? Or they just are hiring really incompetent people. Either way, you're being taken advantage of. So the other thing is, is I've taken over and helped people with properties like this exact scenario, but I've also seen them to where like, I'm looking at their occupancy is maybe 50% or less. And I'm like, ah, I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. Let's go ahead and make some phone calls to, to the property manager and see if they're returning those calls. So I see if they're returning. If they do, I see if they show up for the showing that they schedule. Um, but oftentimes they're pretty sloppy about all of it, whether it's getting back via text or getting back to a voicemail that was left by me to them for the showing. Either way, poor business. So if they fail at both those, it's pretty, it's pretty conclusive that they suck and need to be fired. Let's face it. They say high tide raises all boats. We're in a good economy right now. Things are great. So some of these property management companies and trades for that matter have a tendency to slide by just because things are good. So, you know, just something to think about. Make sure that you're keeping these people honest. So, so far what we've determined, what this property management company is looking like, they're lazy. So what does lazy mean? They're probably going to be lazy when it comes to, you know, identifying any issues at your property or taking care of any issues. More importantly, if there is an issue, they're probably going to overcharge you anyways. What do they care? You know, these are just lazy tactics or lazy habits, if you will. So I always use the analogy, like if a hot water heater goes out um, and, you know, you're paying 1200 bucks for someone to come out and replace it versus you, if you're managing it, you'll probably get the hot water heater for cost, call it 450. You probably pay, pay a, a plumber to come in and replace it for maybe a couple hundred bucks. It's roughly about half the cost, right? What the numbers that I'm using are not too far off. If you think they are, do me a favor, comment below. I want to hear from you. Let's get this party started. I want to hear, let's go. Especially if you're a property manager. Here's the thing. I'm not trying to take away from the good property managers that are out there. There's plenty of good ones. There's just a handful of bad ones, just like in any industry that kind of ruin it, right? So, but what I recommend you doing and all people doing, I'm going to get into in just a second, but do me a favor first, click on the subscribe button below and give me a thumbs up at the same time. Let's keep going. Let's get back into this. Here's what I recommend every investor doing, doing your own property management company. Now I know some of you guys are like, no, I don't want to be a property manager. All right. Well, all right. Why don't you go in, say, you know, take all your hard effort, of finding the property, fixing up the property, and then turn it over just for someone to kind of collect rent. Let's use a hypothetical for a second. I'm just going to use really simple numbers because that's how I work. So let's say, for example, my mortgage payment's 700 bucks. Let's say I'm getting $1,000 a month in rent. 
That means I have a $300 a month profit. It's not bad on a $700 a month mortgage, right? All right, so let's talk about this. What do you pay a property management company? Typically around 10%. I'm just going to use that number. It's a simple number. It's a pretty common number. What's that end up being? That's $100. Of your profit, how much of it your profit is it? Yeah, it's about a third. It's actually a, exactly a third in this scenario. So you're giving away a third of your profits every single month to, for someone else to what? Here's the check, put it in the bank. Here's the check, put it in the bank. Now, so that's the easy part. Let's say a hot water heater goes out like the scenario we just did. And now you're giving away way more money than you need to to have that replaced. Maybe you could replace it yourself. Who knows the situation, but no one's gonna care about the property more than you. That's why I recommend every real estate investor dig in and do the property management themselves on their property for a year. Even if you hate it, do it for a year so you fully understand it. You're, um, I think most of the time people realize it's really not that bad. In fact, it's not, it, they, you may enjoy it, who knows? But at the end of the day, I say you learn it so you know if you're being taken advantage of or not on the properties. You learn a lot of the ins and outs of what to look for and what not to look for, and also how quickly your property could rent if you're doing it versus somebody else. Again, you pay commissions for all of these different things. So try to keep as much money as possible and do property management for your own properties as long as you can. And it turns out, at the end of the day, if you are getting screwed over by your property management company, the one way that you won't get screwed is by managing your own properties. And that way, there's only one person to blame if things do go south. Yourself. Take yourself out to the woodshed. What this is going to do, ultimately, by being your own property manage manager, just makes you a more well-rounded investor. And again, if you get successful and you blow the doors off and you're like, oh, now I have to outsource this. You can outsource it and find a good property management company. There's plenty of them out there. Or you could bring that in-house and start your own property management company as well. When you start to factor in what's 10% of your total holdings, it could be a significant amount. Who better to run that than you? Who's going to take better care of it than you? And guess what happens? You get a good reputation and you're doing it. You're going to find that people will ask you, will you manage my properties? Well, now you have outside income as long as you have your license and you, you're a broker so you could do so. So anyways, something to think about. If you've liked today's episode, you're going to like this next video coming up. So make sure you subscribe and follow us. Looking forward to sharing more of these wisdom and tips with you in the future. I want to help you get going on your real estate portfolio. So what I'm giving you today for watching the video is a hundred ways to find off market deals. All right. So click on that. That's yours for free. Let's get going. Let's build your portfolio. Let's make you your own real estate property management company. Let's do it. Let's get serious.